Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it's March, right? I Almost April. Getting towards April, but the wind tunnel on Elm Street today was insane. Yes. Like, absolutely. My hair looks like this yeah. on purpose. Yeah, right. That was a design aspect. Um, yeah, so I want a couple things. Yes. Because you're like, I don't have any notes. And I'm like, look, I scratched I, things on the bottom of a piece of paper, so we're Well, good. it's also because now I'm trying to prepare for my Wednesday yes. shows as well. And so, like, I'm trying to actually come up with, I like, know. a format. It's hard. And you were saying when you used to do this on your own, yeah. like, how much stress it is, it, right? And then I get in my own head, and I'm like, no, no one's I mean, watching it anyway. No one cares. Why am I doing this? It's not easy. You know? People think there's lots of things that people think are just easy. This is, I mean, this, the conversation stuff that we have makes this easy right if we have a guest on we just talk yep we're it's easy um maybe we bore the heck out of people I don't know. <laughs> but at least you always know what the weather a, was on a right. tuesday when you <laughs> do the show by yourself it is a lot of burden because you not only do you have nobody to communicate with right. necessarily you do have to feel like you have more specific Right. So I uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going to divide it into I'm dividing it into three segments. Yeah. And then honestly for me the worst part really is just getting in my own head yeah. where I'm just like who cares, you know? Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> you know, and then I'm like but you know what? Just do it. So So um couple things. Yes. So Manchester what? put all these god the ugly trash, cans? trash cans. First why, of all, why is it right in front of the door here? Well, and that, I hope that's I just, not where it's going to go. Yeah, I think so. And that's I, not logical. So they're ugly. They're really they're big black plastic the, the, trash so, receptacles. So, so they huge come up to about here on me. Yeah. Okay. So they're very large. When I'm, I, I, I just I have a problem with Manchester. Like if you go to Nashua or you go to Concord, Concord's a really good example. When you walk down their main street. It's nice looking. It's just not oh, ugly. Oh, but now I'm gonna say to Tammy. But they spend. They got taxes. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But I think we do spend the money. That's the problem. I think we just don't spend it well. And without in town Manchester down there, I have a hard time believing that it's going to be kept well. So they've put in these trash cans, and I just came over Granite, and I purposely came up Elm. They're all over the place, They're, which I guess is good because... I mean, I'm a fan of trash cans. I will tell you a short little story. So we were in India in 2002-ish, backpacking all over the country. Massive country, yeah. billions of people. Literally never saw... Uh, a, 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 a place where there wasn't a human. Oh, Even yeah. like on a train driving. Oh yeah, it's insane. You look and you'll be like, oh, I think the first time in three months I haven't seen other people. And then you're like, no, no there's one. they're on the horizon is some yep. dude, right? The country is filthy. Yes. Um, really, you know, and, and it turns out it's because mm, there are no trash cans. Which is weird. But we went to one town, which is named, uh, I think the name was Hyder Hyderabad. And I, I recall, like, Louie and I were walking around, and we we're like, why does this city feel so different? And we're like, we kind of like it here. It's not and then I started researching, and I was like, oh, it's because it's clean, because it had trash cans. But the only reason it had trash cans is it was sort of, it's, uh, it was India's Silicon Valley at so that time. So there were a lot of foreigners. And no, and Bill Clinton, when he went to India, that was one of the towns he stopped at. So they were like, oh, oh we let's should make it clean. fix That's this one funny. town, right? So trash cans matter. I, I'm not against trash cans. That's not it. I mean, I'm actually, I'm looking at the number of them. And it did seem like there were some recycling ones, which I'm thinking, do you really think, unless you have a trash can next to a recycling can, which is not what I saw. But also, nobody's who going to, knows what to right. put in those? I go well, to the what, airport and I'm like, plastic, uh, trash, paper. Uh, and then I'm like, but but what is the trash if it's not plastic or paper? Because so I can't even. I don't know who's going to, like... In town Manchester, to the best of my knowledge, emptied the trash, I believe. I would assume they took the trash out of the trash cans. That you would think that was a municipal well, job? I don't know, though. And I'm like... Trash removal is not a city well, job? Well, emptying the trash can, like removing it, and maybe the city then picked it up. Uh. But I'm just looking at the number of trash cans, and I'm like, so how much is this going to cost us? To empty, because there's a lot of them. So, and they're ugly. And I just think I, I don't. Uh, I think they're fine. I just think they're placed in really weird, odd places. Certainly, so we'll the one see. in front of this building is like 
you know, right from there. here to the yeah. end of the table in front of the door. Yeah, and it's, and like, it's uh, like, why don't you put it between? I mean, it's like, literally I, in the middle of the side wall. On the side, yeah, like it the should edge. be where the tree things yeah. are so that so, you're not changing the I flow. Just have, I, I'm a skeptic when it comes to Manchester having the ability to not make ugly decisions because I never see us do anything well. We plant flowers in the medians on Granite Street and then we let it get all weeded and full of trash. And then they rip out those plants. <laughs> the only time I see anyone planting plants in Manchester that isn't us on the, you know, yeah. we are West people is usually two weeks before the mayoral right. elections or before any kind of mean, elections and suddenly what I everyone's don't understand like, Ooh. is if you drive through Bedford out on 101, they planted all sorts of plants in their median and they look fine. Like, wait, because somebody's actually, if you're going to spend the money to put in plants and shrubs, you have to weed them. I mean, I get it. Like, but in, and if the city doesn't have enough employees, perhaps the city could engage with a volunteer group to come and manage. I mean, it just seems like we don't do anything good in Manchester to try to keep the place not disgusting. I, you know, I mean, I certainly think there there are challenges here. I am a big proponent of let's see if the private market right. can. So, you know, that's um, why we support We Heart West. Yep. Uh, try and really keep the yep. west side. But honestly, anyone who's watching this, if you live on the west side, actually, if you live anywhere in Manchester, mm. Could you walk outside your and front door and just pick up all the trash in front of wherever you personally live? Because just, it is gross yep, out there. Yep. My um, neighbor, I think I it's my the neighbors, end of winter. Yeah, it just the, all the, the, melts the, down. The, and the snow melts and the trash that was in there, but it's really bad right now. And if you now. smoke cigarettes, don't throw them on the ground. Just do me a favor. Like, just do it just for Tammy, because I hate it. <laughs> but, like, I, we don't smoke. Nobody who comes to our house smokes. And I noticed, and it's not the entire street, the entire front of my property is filled with cigarette butts because apparently people who live next door stand at the end of the driveway and smoke and they and all end up it. and like don't do it just put them in a can do something like eh. anyways um another thing in manchester speaking of ugly things so since last thursday so between thursday and sunday i think it was sunday there were three shootings in manchester wow one was up on orange street and as of monday when i was looking at this I don't believe any of the shooters have been apprehended. So I'm like, oh, that's not good. So uh, there was one up on Orange Street where somebody supposedly, they supposedly knew who the person was, burst into an apartment, shot a pit bull. Some guy jumped out the window. They say they know who, the, the, the people in the apartment knew who the person was. And I'm like, okay, so if you know who he is, put his picture on the news. How come that guy's picture's not out in the newspaper saying, do you know, if you see this guy, let us know. Right. Then there was a sh another shooting on Dubuque Street. Okay. Great, you know, just what we need. There was another shooting last, it was th last Thursday over on Mammoth Road where like the duplexes are up near Smith Road. And I'm like, this is what is going on with a number of shootings happening? I don't know if it's just, I don't know. I think people in general, I was watching a new, uh, we were watching the news. Uh, we're going to Florida this week and um, we were watching some news from down there because they recently had a tornado, you know, like, let's check out what's going on. But there was. <laughs> Let me know how dangerous it's no, going to no, be. No, no, the tornado was inland. It's all good. Um, I actually saw a thing on Twitter today that was, uh, 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 it was in Texas. Yeah. There was a tornado. And it was just a short clip, yeah. but it, uh, it's the tornado's yeah. going, and there's a red truck, and it's in just the tornado, and it puts it down, and it's on its side, and then it flips it right, and then the, the car that was filming it goes by. And I thought, man, whoever that driver is in the like, red truck, the I mean, maybe there wasn't some, right. or maybe it was just picked up, but I was like, that person must be like, whoa. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I saw a news clip from Miami Beach. And I, I'm watching it, and the news person said the same thing. So there, Miami Beach, and I'm not sure if it was this weekend. I think, believe it's this weekend. Um, they actually, there were so many people there for spring break. Now, Miami Beach is an island. Yep. They cannot manage the number. They have no way. Oh, and wow. in like the week's time, five random people had been shot. Wow. And they had a, they put a curfew in place. They literally curfewed Miami Beach from Thursday night to Monday morning. Basically, like, you can't come here. 
And then even the newscaster goes, this isn't your parents' spring break. Like you could just tell from the videos, this isn't like spring break where all anybody used to do for spring break was go to the beach and drink. Drink right. and dance, that yep. was spring break. Now people are shooting each other and it was very, you could just tell, there's like this climate of I mean, I think violence that seems to have just become normal and shooting people and damaging things just seems to be way too commonplace. Lately. I mean, I will tell you that I think it's endemic of uh, a social malaise. Mm. It's an issue. It's certainly something as someone who grew up in third world countries yeah. and who's traveled extensively, yeah. mostly in third world countries. Um, it's when life becomes cheap. I think it's a, it's when, when people think that it, it's when economics are bad. Mm. Um, I think, you know, we're still seeing the, the, the tail end of all the COVID madness, yeah. right? Like there's yeah. this pent upness. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's life becomes cheap. I mean, in, in Brazil, by way of example, where my dad was stationed in the nineties, I mean, the crime was so yeah. bad that, uh, you know, you, you were told not to ride any local buses, but if you were on a local bus, the bus would just at a red light, a gang would just jump on the bus right. with guns and mug from the start of the bus to the end of the bus. And if you refuse to give them your wedding ring or your whatever, your watch, they just shoot you on right. the bus. And that's just how life is. So when we talk about sort of uh, values and property mm. rights and all of these things, these these are all important right. things. Because this is because what keeps our, our society above that fringe. Right, and also it, 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 it is what builds a better society yes. for everyone, right? Like, I think we're so losing sight of this notion. People are like, oh, we don't need property rights, or, right. you know, everyone owns everything. And I'm like, well, when no one owns anything- right. Nobody takes the, care of it, everything goes the, to crap. The term is the, the tragedy of the commons, yeah. right? And that is literally where it's like, well, if no one cares about it because everyone owns it, then no one cares about it. But if someone, you care about your yeah. house because yep. it's yours or your car because it's yours and we want to instill that. Yep, it's just, it seems to be, it's unfortunate that it just seems, it's not just a New Hampshire thing. It's not just a Manchester thing. Although I think Manchester's leadership is failing to to even talk about the problems. Like, when was the last time you heard Joyce Craig say anything? Oh no, I mean seriously. Where is her? Where is her press release? Where is her news? Why isn't she on the news saying, you know, we're we're working on this? We're doing. So, just so, so here's the thing, right? It's also, you know, there's this tit for tat in politics that you see, but in the end, it's kind of like. There is some objective truth. Hmm. And like one of the things I'm hyper upset about this week is the whole thing about Hunter Biden's laptop. Right? So so just <laughs> to break it down for two seconds, and this was the first time I caught a ban on social media, so it's personal to me, <laughs> right? 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 Because when, when all of that came out, look, I don't have a stake. Like, I'm not on anyone's team. I'm right. just, I'm on team truth. Right, if I right. have to pick a team, I'm going to be like, well, I think there are objective truths. There are things, and, you know, one side says this, and the other side says this. This yep. is propaganda. This is propaganda. Somewhere in the middle, they're spinning, yep. right? But to see what happened with that. So for anyone who, you know, stuck under a rock, just to be really clear, two years ago, about two weeks before the election, yep. a laptop from the president, then running for president, um, Joe Biden's son materialized somewhere. Yep. The FBI, Bill Barr, who turns yep. out, who was the AG at the time, who now is like, oh yeah, well, Biden was totally lying in a presidential debate with Trump, yeah. where they were like, no, we have this letter that says 50 intelligence unnamed, maybe they are named, uh, intelligence sources vow that this is a, uh, this this is a, is a, a, a right. fake, um, it's not true. The photos had him smoking crack. There were photos of him with what looks like underage yep. people. Um, I mean, it's pretty, right. it's pretty, 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 Right. scaly like it is just moral decay and nastiness well, and this is after also the whole thing with ukraine of all places so, where so, he was getting billions it, paid billions of dollars 
for a thousand dollars a month to sit on uh, some petro board that he has right? no experience whatsoever in so so just really like you could just unpack it and go there's clearly something not weird and shady stuff going on but there, because right? trump was the one saying it you know orange man bad and it can't be true and so we're, we're at this stage where it's like you can't actually just let that slide because it's your team or your guy and didn't the new york times get banned from like Twitter or something like didn't the New York media? Post New York Post so, sorry. so the New York Times said these are all lies the New York Post was like we're pretty sure it's true the New York Post and anyone who was sharing the data like I was got got taken down or yep. banned um some people from called, social media and now it's two years later and it the New York Post's headline this week was like oh the new york times all the news that's fit to print two years after the election when our guy got in right, right? and it's just like this is so not now it good it, enough it, it, the the evidence seems to point and the general consensus in the world is oh it was a real laptop and this was really true and i'm like so we so got who's got, who's who's covering up who and who's well, lying and, 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 and it's not even just the cover-ups okay so the cover-ups it's like fine i mean my my advice to people is stop following the news because right. you don't even know what's true anymore you know ukraine i have no it idea ain't the story people are telling you so when you hear things like oh zelensky just banned all opposition yeah, parties <laughs> and any media he that doesn't like. I'm like, like oh, hmm. I don't really think that's true. <laughs> that sounds, I don't know, just a smidge authoritarian to yep. me. Uh, that doesn't really sound like American values of openness, uh, you know, for the folks mm. who like are like, yay, yay, democracy. That's anti-democratic at a minimum. But everything's just being led to slide and it's like so so not only is it they lie but then when the truth comes out there is zero accountability yep. like zero when is the last time any government official has been fired oh, they, for, for anything where they've done something wrong how, how does Fauci wait, wait, still have a job <laughs> He's talking about retiring. Oh, Wouldn't God, I awesome? hope so. I mean, um, he's also talking about bringing back masks, because I guess... Oh, my oh. God. So the war in Ukraine is supposed to be pretty much over. The parties are sitting down. They want to do peace talks. This morning, the news is all like, America says, do not give concessions. And I'm like, so you, want America, don't want the war to end, because the war gives you an excuse to say, this is why gas prices are high. It's not. Inflation is why gas prices yes. are high. And it's going to get free worse stuff is because why gas prices are they're high. literally talking about printing another $2 yep. trillion. Federal government is so woefully broke. Um, On a more local level. Yes. So, well, <laughs> Sorry. In case anybody at home cares. Um, so last week at the up in Concord, uh, this week is actually what's called crossover. Okay. Um, In March, there's a deadline. There's hard, there's deadlines set for the last day that the House can act on their bills. And there's a deadline when the Senate can act on their bills. And then they switch and they give each other, you know, the stuff that survived the House goes over to the Senate. The stuff that survives the Senate comes over to the House. They do it again. And at the end, that's when they go to the governor's desk. Um, Last week, you know, I'm going to veer off. My, one of my things that I think I'm going to start posting about and reminding people is what makes somebody a public servant. Okay. Because I hate the use of the word public servant in the way it is used. If you get a salary, a legitimate salary, as much as it might make you feel good to call yourself a public servant, look up the word servant and you are not a public servant. You are a public employee. There's nothing. That doesn't mean it's bad. That just means... I don't really like when we call. Yeah, you're you're not people. serving. You're being remunerated. The mayor for your... of Manchester is not a public servant. They make sixty eight thousand dollars a year. You can argue that might be not enough, but that's a legitimate salary. That is more than the average income. Police officers, any city employee, fire department, those are not public servants. Those are public employees. That doesn't mean that you're doing not doing your job. That doesn't mean you don't deserve a paycheck. None of that. That's just you are not a public servant. State reps, state senators, those are public servants because a hundred dollars a year is not actually called pay. Yeah, that's not. That yeah. don't, that is what a public Agreed. servant. The people who sit on, um, even the aldermen, I'll say that they're, you know they might get a little stipend. They probably get their health insurance paid for. So I don't that I we can argue about. But those are public servants. You're giving of yourself to do something for the public 
yep. in general, whether we like them or not. So last week, true public servants, the people who serve up in the state house, um, had three days of session at the state house, thank God. Um, 33 hours over the three days, there were three long session days. They went to like 9, 30, 10 o'clock easily at night, most nights. Um, they covered 170 bills. <laughs> Um, a lot of good bills did come out. It was fun to watch uh, for the geeks and me. <laughs> it was fun to watch because they obviously had a, uh, the Republicans who are in the majority obviously had a strategy. Any bill that came out of committee with an ITL, so a kill recommendation, yep. Rather than take up time on the House floor arguing, because then the Democrats could argue, no, 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 we want to do that, they moved to table those bills. Okay. So when people see it, they're like, why were they doing that? Because t uh, mo a table motion is non-debatable. And if you table them, that it, doesn't necessarily mean it, it's dead. No. It just means that it comes back next year or at it a later stage. It could come back. When something's on the table, you can take a vote to... Um, take it off the table. This week, while we're before crossover, they could still move to take things off the table. After this week, in order to take something off the table, they would have to suspend the rules oh, wow. to allow a, a vote because it's already, you know, there's rules. So it makes it much more difficult Harder. after this week yep. for, to take these things off the table. But what it does allow is for the, because those bills are not killed, is amendments to other bills could take that type of language and that bill was never actually killed. Okay. So there is, but I mean, I think in this case, the main reason was just to limit floor debate over things that were gonna get killed anyways. Okay. The Democrats, um, I was reading in the paper, they were talking about how like there was a, um, a bill to repeal a lot of the things in the newly set um, a late term abortion ban. And the reason it failed, it was a Democrat thing. They wanted to take away the ultrasounds. They wanted to take away all sorts of stuff that would have basically gutted the, the law. But the Democrats weren't there at the end of the day when the bill came up. Like if those six people stayed, they might have had the votes. And that's how it works. You've got to stay. You know, you got to be there to push the button or else your vote's not there. Um, some good things that did come out. Um, Education freedom accounts, there mm -hmm. was a bill, there was all sorts of bills to try to gut that. They all got tabled. There was a bill to repeal it in total that failed. So education freedom accounts remain. Um, there was a bill passed. And keep in mind, these have to go to the Senate. Well, the, the ones that die don't go to the Senate. But there was a bill passed to prohibit New Hampshire from enforcing um, anti-Second Amendment laws which was a big thing because that means if the federal government imposes some anti-Second Amendment law, New Hampshire can say, yeah, we're, we're not enforcing your laws. Which, you know, is is how it's supposed to work. Right. So if it sounds radical to folks no, back home, it's, not. it's totally normal. Remember the way America was designed is the states have the rights. The federal government's supposed to be small and limited. Yep. They're supposed to follow the constitution yep. and the states are supposed to say, hey, we're, we're experimenting. We're doing these different things in different states. So um, it's really just based nullification, right? It's just saying, no, I'm sorry, the, that violates the constitution. That's not a constitutional law. All, so we're going to do our own they thing. All also passed a bill, which will have to go through the Senate, obviously, um, saying there will be no state funds used for commuter rail. Nice. So that puts a little wrinkle into the, you know, those who are determined to try to, um, you know, we Tammy and I were talking about this right before the show because I, I mentioned to her that on Sunday's paper, I noticed that they're presenting this commuter rail uh, that's supposed to go from Manchester with mm. two stops in Nashua down to Boston is now being sort of presented as this, how do we do it as opposed to, are we going to do this? Right. And that's a problem. I, yes. So, so just historically, there have not since I think the days of the, uh, uh oh, this is the days of the steam engine, which apparently now steam engines are racist. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff. Up. I don't know how that happens, but um, you know, it, it's uh, mostly any public works mm -hmm. railway line has n never been uh, profitable, and so people are like, "Well, we have to subsidize it," and it's like, "But you're subsidizing something that no one wants." Right. You keep telling everyone well, they I, want you it. You know what? 
I'm okay with rail, but please don't ask taxpayers to pay for it. Yeah. If you can build a if you can build a rail system that is self-sustaining and is paid for by the people who actually travel on it, I'm all for More that. More power to you. And but it's... I don't that, I I I've read the stories of every rail project in this country and probably across the world. They are not self-sufficient. They depend on tax subsidies. I don't want to subsidize a train. I don't need a train. Do you need a train? No. I don't need a train. And, and, um, I don't think the elderly people in my neighborhood need a train. I don't think fam young people trying to raise a family need a train. Why should all these people I mean, don't get me wrong. It? I would probably take a train to Boston once in a while but if, not it, if was it was there. Not, not but if it was but why can't I just pay right. for it? Exactly. And honestly, I saw a little clip from uh, Pete Buttigieg, mm -hmm. uh, Minister of Tra Transport or whatever. Whatever he is. Um, and he was talking about, so so the advice from the powers that be are like, oh, sorry, well, you know, if gas prices are high, take a bus, was literally a tweet from them. And or buy an electric car. Or buy an electric car, uh, you know, let them eat kale, right, as I like right. to say. Um, but, but this dude basically was like, yeah, and we have massive capacity on all public transport in America. And I was like, so what you're really saying is you run a department where you <laughs> you you provide no a service, meaning you steal money from everyone yeah. to provide a service that no, no one's one using. wants. I, I, I have my I have a theory. I think some of the reason why we put the advertising on the side of the buses now is so that you can't see that there's nobody in the buses when they go by. Probably. Because I always <laughs> look and go, oh, look, there's one person. If there's only one person taking the bus, I honestly believe you could probably pay for Uber for these people and bring them door to door. I mean, it'd be Especially cheaper. Especially seniors. I hate that I see seniors waiting for a bus to get someplace and they can't actually get from point A to point B. They can get part way to point A to part way to point B and then they're out walking in the cold with their shopping bag. Yeah. I would rather put them in an Uber and just pay their way if we're going to pay for things. Well, you know, once we are all pod people and controlled by the WEF, the World Economic Forum, apparently Biden today was like, yeah, we're ushering Biden. in the new world order. And then on trending on Twitter was like, no, that's not what that, that, he said the words, but that's not what it means confused. at all. He's I mean, you know, it's like either they tell you the truth and then they lie about that or they lie to you and then they lie about, about that. that. Always good to be a skeptic. Um, that's really all we have for this week. Carla will be on her own, maybe with a guest or something next week, because I'll be sitting on a beach in Florida. And then neither of us will be here the following week because we'll both be on a beach in Florida. And then we'll come back nice and tanned and relaxed and we'll have Ooh. a wonderful show. So, um, <laughs> have fun next week. Thank and you. Enjoy this weather. I think spring's finally here. and. Goodbye, winter. And I think there's a. I think this Sunday is the St. Patrick's Day parade. I, I yeah, know. I don't know. Sunday, I, do, I think, Elm I, Street. That's all we got. That's all we got. Have, Have a good, good one, weekend. guys. Bye. Bye.